It's going to be a three card you pick Oracle with diet at cross finish. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Easy peasy. Three card oracle. I'll choose three cards. Lay them out face down. You'll choose one, two, or three, or all of them if you want. Have a question for uh, each one. It'll be a yes, no, or maybe answer when I turn them over. And then I'll do a further uh, uh, dyadic cross, which is a six card uh, draw uh, with five more cards to uh, make uh, 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 dig deeper into that divination. So get your questions ready. So before these readings, I meditate, I call for protection, I uh, look for guidance, and you can do the same. And uh, But what I do suggest that you do is just pause the tape right now, get something to drink, make yourself comfortable, set your question or questions in your mind, and then uh, we'll proceed with the reading. Here we go. So this is The Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box, nice magnetic clasp, good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And uh, it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual card, shadow cards and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78. And I'll, um, I'll show you, you know, how you can use them. I'll explain why, why that is even. So we'll start with the booklet, and um, it's a nice, uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all the pictures of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so, a um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend. Um, in the guidebook, uh, the, her, her, she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer, um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time, and an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love, and even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out, but it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon, and I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So they're not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of cards, but they've got a nice glossy finish and they've got a beautiful gold uh, gild on the edges. And uh, the pictures are nice and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing and uh, lots of rich color. And it tells you under each of the cards how to use them. And then if you're going to use them as she suggests for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting. But I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I picked here, and it's in the stick somewhere. <laughs> but uh, So this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then... For justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so, number and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards, period, for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. Uh, 
So it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as Justice is number 8 and Strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as Strength number 8 and Justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation, but it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at and and if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings. I would think is a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. Okay, so three card oracle. So we're going to go one, two, three. I'll put three cards face down. There'll be one, two, and three. You can choose uh, which of those cards uh, for your question or maybe a couple of questions. And then uh, once that's revealed, there'll be yes, no, or maybe answers. And once that's revealed, I'll do a dyadic cross, which is a six card uh, spread uh, to finish, to maybe go a little bit deeper into um, those uh, answers for you, for those one, two, three cards. Okay, so we're going to take three cards. One two, and three. Put these aside for just a minute while you make a decision about your cards. One, two, three. One, two, three. Remember, you can stop the tape, take a minute if you need to, to make a decision. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And now put these up here to the side. We're going to reveal number one card if that's what you chose. So this is the Two of Pentacles, and the Two of Pentacles is balancing out, okay, getting to a perfect uh, situation. One idea may be a little higher than the other idea at, at, at one time or another, but then something else comes up, and then you've got to find a way to get those things balanced out. And so that is a yes card if you chose um, today, this Two of Pentacles, your number one card. The second card, if that's what you chose... Okay, this is the Queen of Pentacles. This is a great big yes card, as a matter of fact. So uh, this, the Pentacles are value. Uh, sometimes they can be money. And this Queen of Pentacles here is showing us, listen, I have got control of this value. She's very casually had it, had, had it resting on her lap. She's very confident in the fact that she is the queen of this value. Yes, which she says is going to be fine. Okay, number three card, if that's what you chose. This is the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is, you know, making a choice, trying to decide what you're going to do. You know, at different times, this card for me might be a yes uh, card. But right now, this feels like a maybe card. We have to make a decision. The fact that this guy's blindfolded just leads me to feel like he's going to have to grope around a little bit to find out which one of these things uh, he uses. And they won't be completely uh, chosen with his full um, consideration. He's blindfolded. So, yeah, this is a maybe card. So we got uh, a yes, a yes, and a maybe. Okay, now we'll go a little bit deeper. This is a signifier for that first question, that two of pentacles. And uh, so we'll shuffle these up just a bit. Uh, cut the cards. Another shuffle. And see, what do we have? Five more cards for this divination. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Five more cards. And we'll put this over here to work on that energy. Let's see what comes up as a challenge for that Two of Pentacles. Okay, so we have the Page of Wands. Wands, actions, motions, forward, fire, getting something done. But the Page is the very least effective of the court card. So he's just bringing this idea out. He's bringing this message to the court. Say, hey, maybe we can try this action. Maybe this plan might work. What do you think? Let me present it to you. So the challenge to keeping uh, all, the, all these things balanced is actually finding a way to move forward with a plan to get an action uh, going on. Okay, because, you know, you don't want to lose that balance to you think, well, once I start to make a step forward, I'm going to lose what I've got here. So that is the challenge, finding the perfect time to initiate this page, bring this plan, this action into the picture. The base of this reading here, oh, another page. Now, this is the page of cups. Cups are emotions, uh, their compassion, their passion, and this has a little surprise in there. So this page of cups is a cute little girl, and she says, "Listen, I've got this. Uh, I've got this little uh, uh, little cup here of passion, compassion. Uh, there may be a surprise there." And she looks very uh, cheeky, actually. So the base of this was sort of understanding the uh, passion in this issue, you know, and ready for a little surprise and uh, and a little bit of anticipation there. 
the the uh, past of this reading, this knight of swords, you know, the knight is the fighter of the royal suite. He, his swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And uh, this knight almost looks like he has wings when in fact, it's actually part of the, the scenario, the background perhaps. But this knight is going to, is going to take wing and get this truth, uh, act, uh, Justice rules law. He's going to get this done. And we come into this with some determination. So when you come into an issue with that much determination, but it's something that you've got to keep balanced and you're a little hesitant about making that move forward, then all, it's understandable why you would have a question about this. And so this, uh, but this is a yes uh, card. In the sky, this reading then, another page. So lots of messages, lots of beginnings here. So this page of swords, swords again, truth, justice, rules, law. This page is bringing this, uh, this little, this little sample of the sword to us and showing us that, you know, look, we can do something with this. It might be a little dangerous, but with caution, <coughs> we can bring this forward and make something happen. So the sky is to, uh, you know, acknowledge this this uh, truth, this justice, these rules, this law with some caution, okay? Uh, just bringing it into the picture. The likely outcome of this, this yes card, is the star. And look at that. So this star is ready to shine, okay? She's just practiced. She's showing us that I can get this thing done and uh, keep your attention on me. I'm just emphasizing here with my little wand here that I am, in fact, this star. So yeah, you're going to come out of this spinning like roses. The page is trying to keep things balanced. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, two of pentacles is trying to keep things balanced. we got a message that, that we can move this thing forward. There is a plan that could be had, the beginnings of a plan at least. It could be a surprise. It could be a compassionate issue that we're dealing with. But with the determination we have to get this truth, to get this justice to follow those rules to make that law work for us and this page up here in the sky says but we've got to be careful with this uh this sword that we're dealing with uh, um, it's just the beginning but if we follow through carefully yes this is going to make us uh, uh very uh, happy with the outcome okay now we'll go on to the second one if that's what you chose number two is that queen of pentacles, very confident in her value. This queen knows what she's worth. She's not flaunting it. You know, she looks like a simple queen. Okay, she's got a lovely dress on, and it took some uh, confidence in herself to display herself in that beautiful uh, dress. But the rest of her garb tells us that she is a practical queen of her value. She knows when to use it and when to just be a little restrained. Okay, so this is a yes card. We're going to take five out of this pack to finish that off. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. The challenge to this Queen of Pentacles is right here in this Fool card. Fool is the beginning of a journey, getting something started, jumping off into the ether, just trusting that things are going to work out well for us. Okay, so this queen, the challenge to her, understanding her value, knowing her place, is knowing that, listen, there is a, 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 an adventure that needs to start, but I'm very comfortable in my value right here where I am. The base of this reading then, with this Knight of Pentacles, so again, uh, value, is uh, the fellow who's going to fight for that right, okay? This soul is going to tell us that, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm taking this the full measure as far as I can go with it confidently. Um, the past of this reading, this King of Cups, just reminds us that we can, we probably came into this really, really charged with emotion, with compassion uh, about the issue, perhaps, or um, at least we should have. And the sky of this reading with this Empress is just being very fruitful, knowledgeable, very confident. Uh, really studying the issue. We can tell from her steely uh, gaze that she is really looking deep into the situation, getting ready to make an action on this. So that's what we want to aim for. We want to aim for coming off of the comfort of knowing that we're in full charge of our value and knowing that we can, we have what it takes to move this thing forward, to get started on this journey. And then the likely outcome of this is judgment. And so judgment is surrendering to the inevitable, to admitting our failures, our worths, and, uh, and saying, yeah, this is everything I have to bring to it. Take it and tell me how I can go forward with it. So if we're going to risk our value on this new journey towards judgment, then we know it has to be a good, good, good uh, place to go. So that was a yes card. Final card, number three. And you know I'm going to put my three fingers up there. So the number three card, the signifier for this one 
is that Seven of Cups. So kind of a blind um, stab in the dark for a choice of how to go. Cups are compassion, passion, emotion, you know, something heartfelt. And, uh, but, you know, we're not quite completely in the clear with this fellow with his blind uh, blindfold on, uh, on what it is we're going to grab. Now, the good thing is that almost all of the choices that you have there are good choices. And the one that might be a poorer choice is actually behind him and a bit hard to get to. So we'd really have to contrive to, to not get a, a beneficial outcome in this. And this is a maybe uh, card right here. So this is perhaps. Quizás. Okay, so five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cards are done with the can for us. I hope that's not upside down. And we'll see what the challenge is to this maybe card, the Seven of Cups, making a blind choice, really. Uh, and here it is in inverted. I really don't like inverted cards. I'm not confident with my uh, divinations for these cards, but I've done all I can to make sure it was not inverted. And at the last minute, I guess the flip of my hand, I turned that card over and I didn't realize it. I wasn't paying attention. So this card wants to be read inverted. I'll start out by telling you the Page of Pentacles this is a great big offer of value. And this uh, page here is the weakest of the court cards. So she's bringing forward to us this offer of value, something to be considered. However, with this card inverted, I want to say that, um, you know, this could be a clumsy uh, uh, offer. Okay. This could be not really knowing the direction that you're going, but nonetheless, it's something of value to be considered. So uh, it could lead us in the wrong direction. Look at that. So that's a perfect companion to that uh, Seven of Cups and that choice. Really being careful because what's being presented to us may not be perfectly clear. The base of this reading, thank you, being uh, not inverted, is the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is sometimes called the Greedy Merchant. And this woman right here is very, look, arms folded, really looking at us with almost a sneer, beautiful hat. She's love, dressed in a beautiful manner, and she's got all her trophies of compassion and passion on display behind her. You know, so she's saying, yeah. I've got what it takes. I can make this happen. So the base of this reading is really quite a lot of confidence, which is what you're going to need, as a matter of fact. In the past of this reading, with this Queen of Wands, wands are actions, forward movement, fire, getting something done, a plan, an idea. And this Queen of Wands is saying, yeah, I feel very gracefully in charge of this uh, action, this plan, this idea that I'm bringing with me. And I'm handing it out to you. Look, I'm giving you what you're going to need here. The sky of this reading is this page of wands. So again, just the weakest of the court cards, but again, this action. So once this queen uh, brings us this action, then we have to know that it's really just the beginning. It's, just, it's as high as we can hope for. It's just the beginning of something that we need to move forward with. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing with this chariot is that's the challenge, is that this could move quickly. So we brace ourselves, we sit ourselves on that chariot, and we get ready for the ride. This woman is corseted up. She's... Uh, struck a, a, a confident pose and she said, okay, let's do it. Let's go. So that was the maybe card. And although there's lots of indecision and uncertainty in here, uh, brace yourself for the ride and get on with it. So those are the choices we had today. Three card oracles. And I hope something in there was useful for you. So what did you think? Did you like the cards? Um, and, and were the divinations right, or did you come up with something a little bit different? Because that's completely valid. So uh, hopefully it was uh, meaningful for you. If it wasn't, it might be for somebody that you know. It could be that you uh, might want to think about it in a couple of days. Or if it doesn't hit home with you, that's fine. Don't worry about it. At least we had a little time together. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.